Hello, and welcome back to the shop. Today, I'm going to show you how to reduce Z-Wobble on your Sidewinder X1 3D printer with my own custom designed bracket that looks a little something like this, right here on the Ethereal project. This is my Artillery Sidewinder X1 3D printer. I would say this is one of the best 3D printers you could buy in its price range. It's packed with many features that you would normally see on a much more expensive machine, but it's not perfect. It suffers from Z-Wobble. This is mainly due to the gantry assembly not being supported very well. There are only four fasteners, two on each leg, that screw in from the bottom, fixing the gantry to the base structure. Here and here. This attaches the gantry very well, but it lacks lateral support. Because of the height of the gantry, the weight of the direct drive extruder, and the weight of the roll of filament that sits on top, when this thing really gets moving, the gantry tends to wobble back and forth. This can affect your print quality, especially on taller prints. There have been many modifications that people have come up with to address this issue. One of the more popular ones is to print brackets that mount to the top of the gantry and the back of the base. Then a rod is installed between them, triangulating the gantry to the base structure. This works very well, but it does not fit with the visual aesthetic that I'm looking for. Now, in my opinion, this is one of the best looking hobby level 3D printers you can buy. It doesn't have that DIY look to it. It's got a very well thought out, clean finished appearance, something you wouldn't mind taking to your parents for Sunday brunch. So I wanted to design a support bracket that is functional, but keeps it looking nice. So I spent some time looking over the machine and noticed that the stepper motors that drive the Z-axis lead screws could be a good starting point. Let me bring you in closer and I'll show you what I'm talking about. If you look here, this stepper motor is attached only to the vertical leg of the gantry with a small aluminum bracket. Behind the stepper motor, there are these two screws that hold this cover to the base structure of the printer. My thought was to design a bracket that holds the stepper motor and attaches to the base and the gantry, giving the assembly some more structural rigidity. So I hopped into SolidWorks and began drawing. A few prototypes later, and this is what I came up with. Here is that design 3D printed. This thing worked way better than I expected. So knowing that, I decided to use the tools at my disposal and see if I could mill one of these out of aluminum. And this is what it looks like. This is the visual aesthetic that I'm going for. This looks absolutely amazing mounted to this machine. But there were a couple of small modifications I had to do to the machine to make this design fit. I'm going to go ahead and install it and show you what I'm talking about. I will note that this will only complete one side of the machine. I will address the other side later in this video. But for now, here's what I've got. The lead screw, the end stop sensor with its fastener, the belt pulley, the belt, the four original fasteners, the stepper motor, and the coupler. I've opted for an upgraded coupler. That's not necessary for this modification. Additionally, you will need four more screws and the new bracket. Tools you will need to complete this are a 2, 2.5, and 3 millimeter Allen wrench, and a square. Your machine should have come with Allen wrenches, but you will need to source the square yourself. I'm using a small machine as square. Really, any hardware store carpenter square will do just fine. For extra points, you could 3D print a square before disassembling your machine. Let's get started. I couldn't find the exact length of screw I needed for this size, so I got longer ones and filed them down until they fit correctly. Here's where I had to modify the printer itself. These two holes were the original mounting holes for the stock bracket. They were threaded holes, so I had to drill them out with a 3 16th inch drill bit to make this work. I also had to drill these holes above it to accommodate for the two additional fasteners. It's a good idea to leave these two screws a little loose to make lining up the screws on the other side easier.
I also had to clear a small amount of material here with a 9 32nd inch drill bit so the heads of the screws could fit into these recesses. Now time to install the end stop. I made sure that I had these two screws high enough so I could still use the original mounting point for the end stop. The final step is to square the gantry. Ensure that everything is tight except for the two grub screws on the belt pulley. This will ensure that this side of the gantry can move independently from the other side when you move the lead screw. Using the square in this corner, turn the lead screw to move this side of the gantry up or down until you have achieved squareness. The square should fit firm in the corner and there should be no visible light between the edges of the square and the gantry frame. When you get to this point, carefully tighten the two grub screws on the belt pulley tightening each one slightly back and forth a little at a time until they are tight. When finished, be sure to double check to make sure everything stayed put. And there we have it, one side completed and ready to go. If you would like to 3D print this for yourself or mill it out of aluminum if you have access to one of these machines, I will leave download links of STL files and CAD drawings with dimensions in the video description. If you do not feel comfortable drilling the extra holes in your gantry, I've also designed a bracket that you could use that doesn't require any additional modifications to the machine. I will leave that linked below as well. I still need to mill out the other side from this hunk of aluminum. If you would like to see how I turn this into this on that, I will be doing that in the next video. So be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss it. And as always, Thanks for watching.